Let the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing the notorious one style. As Conor McGregor will join us on tonight's program as the media blitz continues. We saw things got absolutely insane in Dublin, Ireland yesterday. Conor McGregor joined us a couple of days ago, and uh, we'll play you the conversation that we had with Conor. Some uh, interesting tidbits that he tells us leading up uh, to this fight. We tried to get some information as opposed to just smack talk, uh, but it's hard to avoid. Avoid the smack talk when you're talking to Conor McGregor. It's a ton of stuff going on here. We've got a great card on the Fight Network uh, this week for you on a Saturday. Cody Saftik's going to step up and in to join us for the bookie uh, beatdown. Conor McGregor, we got some crazy-ass videos of the week for you. All that and more on tonight's MMA Meltdown. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues, and we're freaking fired up for tonight's uh, program. Uh, we're joined by the notorious one and a man whose notoriety is growing on a daily basis as UFC's 189's media blitz continues. It's been off the hook. It's been intense, and I'm all fired up. Forget about Pacquiao and Mayweather. I don't give a crap about whether Brad Pitt wants to go to a fight or not. I don't care about the celebrities. Ooh, we want to pay $100,000. We're going to go see Pacquiao Mayweather. Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor is the freaking fight that real fight fans are fired up for. And I'm ready to go. Let's bring in Conor McGregor right now. Conor, welcome to the program, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Carter, this uh, media blitz has been an intense one. Uh, you're doing a great job of getting your f uh, fan base fired up. Uh, all fans are getting fired up. I'm fired up. But this thing's a long process, right? You know, this thing, uh, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Is it difficult for you not to get too excited uh, because June 11th is so far away? Um, for me, this is another day. I've always been involved in this. Since I came into the UFC, there's always been a lot of media attention when, when any, any time I fight. So if anything, it's more on his end. He's never experienced something like this. When you sign to fight me, it's a completely different animal. But for me, it's another day. Does four months, uh, does the fight seem long away? I guess with this media blitz sort of wrapping up, uh, you got a couple of stops left, but wrapping up, the fight sort of becomes a realer. Does, does July 11th seem like it's around the corner or does it seem like an attorney? Because as a fan, it feels far away. For you, what's it feel like? Yeah, the fight is most certainly around the corner because Jose is actually around the corner and I am ready to fight now. Uh, as far as your camp is concerned, uh, you've usually spent some time uh, in Iceland. Are you going to do the exact same thing? Is there any changes, training partners, locations? Have you planned your training camp for this fight yet? Um, I'm going to go home anyway, and I'll have, I'll have eight weeks in Dublin. So I'll continue. I'll train with my people who I train with, and then I believe we are going to... I believe I'm going to get a house out in Las Vegas, set up a big gym, bring my team over with me, bring in sparring bodies, and go from there, but it's still not 100% decided, but it's looking like eight weeks in Dublin, eight weeks in Vegas. Uh, what's the normal, uh, what's for you ideally, how many weeks do you like to put in of, of hard work before a fight? I like to continue training. I like to continue. I feel when I don't train, I don't feel good. So is it I, tough? Always, is I it always train, I always train smart, intelligent, and I, keep the pace, I maintain it. Now, I rarely go up or down, I just maintain and continue to get better. Yeah, you're pedal to the metal fighter without a doubt. And you know, you said after the Dustin Poirier fight that one of the reasons why you've been so successful in the UFC, you think that their, their footwork's bad, a lot of the fighters in the UFC, that their angles are bad and you're taking advantage of that. Do you see the same holes in Jose Aldo's game as you've seen in the other fighters? Yeah, I, I, I do. I feel everyone is equal and everyone is below me. So I will go in, I will move around my opponent. And when I hit them, they fall. Now, Jose Aldo opened up as a nearly two to one favorite in this fight. But with each and every passing day, man, the line continues to drop. I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be a pick em when it's all said and done. What do you say to the Las Vegas odds makers that opened up Aldo uh, as a favorite? Um, they are about to lose a lot of money. Are you, do you get motivated? Uh, 
Are you ever? Are you aware of uh, of the uh, the numbers at all? As um, you know, do you like to gamble at all on other fights, on other other sports? Are you aware yeah, of what the I numbers do, are? I, I do gamble occasionally, but I actually haven't in a, in a while. But every single number on planet Earth, I am interested in and I, I am aware of. <laughs> do you think I like that every single number? Do you think? And you know, as you stated, you're a mixed martial artist. You're a student of the game. But you're so good at getting people fired up. Do you think your actual MMA skills and your approach, your technical skills as a fighter, some, sometimes get overlooked? Not just by the media, but maybe by your opponents because you piss them off so much. They're just thinking about the stuff you've told them. They don't realize how technically sound you can be. Yeah, I feel, I feel they overlook it. I feel they feel it is all talk. It is a joke until we are face to face, until it is time to go. And then each one learns as we go. Every contest, people learn. It's not all talk, so this will be no different. What uh, what is the uh, the biggest challenge uh, that Aldo uh, presents to you from from a fighting standpoint? Will you concede that he is the uh, he's the best opponent that you faced? I feel all opponents are similar. They're blank. It's a new body type. Um, I don't feel threatened by him. He has no stopping power. He has not hurt anybody in a long, long time. So I will walk him down. I feel he is battle-worn. He has many, many wars inside the Yogagon. The human brain cannot take them, them wars. Time, time catches up, and then a young gorilla comes and takes over. You know, Connor, I didn't think that you were going to be able to rattle Aldo. I mean, the guy grew up, grew up in Brazil. He, he's not one of these silver spoon kids. He's a tough dude. He's lived a hard life. Uh, but it seems like you, you have started to rattle them a little bit. When you do this stuff, is it part A, a little bit of entertainment, and then part B, is this psychological warfare, and do you feel as a foe that you've already won a round against Aldo by getting in his head? Yeah, there's definitely psychological warfare taking place, but the fact that we are on this world tour, it goes up and down, the intensity goes up and down. Sometimes I... Sometimes it isn't chill, you know, but... I feel he is broken, 100%. All right, we'll let you out uh, on this one, uh, Connor. You've called your shots uh, in the past. You've never been shy about making a prediction, not only about the, uh, the result of a fight, but what's going to happen uh, in this fight. What do you tell UFC fight fans and the gambling community out there? How's this fight going to end? He will be badly, badly hurt within the first four minutes of the first round, and it will be a formality after that. How long his chin holds up, that will be on his brain to decide. Connor, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, continued success. We wish you the best of luck in camp. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. There's uh, Connor McGregor uh, with us. And I'm not lying. I'm stoked. I, you know, I've been covering this sport for over 10 years, and I can think of very, very few fights that I've been this excited for. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin, that was off the hook. And uh, you know, that was that, that vibe, that electricity in Las Vegas, Nevada. Chael Sohn and Anderson Silva, too, had that same type of feel. GSP and Jake Shields was huge, 55,000 people. But it didn't have that same type of aura as Aldo and McGregor does. And I'm glad that this isn't in Ireland. I'm glad that it's not in Brazil. I'm glad that it's in a neutral territory in Las Vegas and Nevada, and the atmosphere is gonna be freaking sick. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues.